Hello, just a quick chat with Mrs. Paul, who says hello. Of course not, said Big Sir. You did a good job. I don't think even I could have done it that well. So why don't you just tell us how you did it? Come on, you're my training partner. Don't hold out on me. I'm not holding out, he said. I just don't. What? You think stupid eyeball-eating aliens can't understand you? Is that it? Lucky looked down, shamed by her words. He dreaded what might happen when they learned the truth. But what choice was there? He couldn't keep this to himself anymore. It had gone too far. He took a deep, deep breath, and then he told them everything he knew. And to his surprise, it was a relief to say it out all aloud. He thought it would just sound crazy, but they didn't question it or get angry. They just listened very quietly. I see it now, said Mr. Kerr, when he was finished. There are many mysteries here, but one thing is clear to me. What happened with those pirates was not your fault. You destroyed them because they left you no choice. But I didn't want to destroy them, he said, choking at the memory. I didn't even know I could do that. He bit his lip. What's wrong with you, Mr. Kerr? What's going on? It appears you have some kind of power, she replied. Some kind of gift. Gift, he shut his eyes. He doesn't feel like a gift. It feels more like a curse. It feels... He couldn't bring himself to say the word evil out loud. He pulled the blanket tight around himself and tried to stand up. He was unsteady. His legs were very weak and every part of him felt raw. Bixa reached out and gave him a hand, but there was an strange expression on her face. What, he said. What is it? Nothing, said Bixa. Her voice was edgy, her needles on an uncertain, tawny shade. It's just, you're still a training partner, right? Of course I am. I still get to kick your ass, even though you've got some kind of weirdo power now. Weirdo power, Lucky gave to her. Bixa, please. Ha <laughs> ha, she grinned and stuck her tongue out at him. You better get dressed or I'll kick your naked ass right now. And somehow he couldn't help smiling back. He didn't mind her rudeness. It made everything seem more normal somehow. He reached for his kit bag and pulled on some clothes. Thought, thankfully, his mother had packed plenty. She must have known he'd been eating them. How he wished he could talk to her, but just once more. She could make sense of this mind-bending mystery. She would make it all okay. But he was alone with the mystery, completely alone. You are not alone, said Mystica softly, startling him. Our legends tell of many people who had gifts like yours. It's our belief that these gifts came from the stars. They are the source of all power, and sometimes they allow people to channel their power. The stars won't work through as you, work through as you see, in ways we do not always understand. Lucky shivered. How do you know that? Because some such people are still alive today. Her eyes glowed gold as she looked deep inside him and seemed to come to a decision. You have trusted me with your secret, Lucky, and I will trust you with mine. For I, like you, have such a gift. She drew herself up, very grand and proud. I am a star talker, she said. The inside of his scalp felt like it was tingling. What's a star talker? Someone who is connected to a star, said Mystica. If you are a star talker, you feel everything your star feels. Your destinies are linked. You share your lives. You call to one another. You hear each other. Stars can call. Lucky felt hot and cold at the same time, sweaty and shivery at once. It felt like he was standing on the edge of something huge. Of course. Your human science doesn't recognise it, but the stars have spirits. They have intelligence. There is nothing they cannot do. And because everything came from the stars, they know the truth of all things. So we star talkers feel the truth of any situation. You cannot hide anything from a star, star talker. But like your mums and dads. Can you read people's minds, he gulped. Not exactly. Mr. Gull looked up at the ceiling, vaulting high above them. As the stars call across the immensities of space, they're like great whales singing in the ocean's deep or bells chiming out like silver in the black. We hear their songs and we feel the truth inside ourselves and we cannot help but speak it, even if it makes things difficult. She peered at him. What is it, Lucky? Why are you looking at me like that? Her words had stirred something in his mind, a memory buried at the edge of his consciousness. Just before he buried, burned the pirates, he'd heard something. A small, soft, silvery sound like the chime of a faraway bell. He'd heard that sound before, hadn't he? It was the sound of the stars singing in his dreams. The dreams had always slipped away by morning, but now the memories came flooding back to him. I think I might have heard the stars too, he stammered. Mystic appeared into his eyes. Indeed, what do they sing to you? I'm not sure. I can't understand the words. A shudder ran through him as he remembered the dreams and then recalled the scorching faces staring back at him in the astrolabe. So there are other star talkers? He asked Mystica. As many as there are stars, she said. In, in ancient days we were known by different names. Soothsayers, prophets, we were high priests, guardians of truth and destiny, watchers over worlds. But some star, star talkers have always had special responsibilities, above and beyond the rest. 
In our time, those duties fall to the star talkers connected to the three brightest stars of this galaxy, Scorpio, Capricorn and Aquarius. Each of us has a different power, a different kind of knowledge. There is the star talker of the present, the star talker of the past and the star talker of the future. You're one of them? I am the star talker of the present, said Mystica. I feel what is happening right now, in this moment. This is my domain. And what about me, said Lucky, every hair in his body prickling. Do I have the same power as you? Am I a star talker? She stroked her chin. Well, I know who the star talkers of the past and the future are, and you are certainly not one of them. Besides, I've never heard of a star talker who burst into flames. But these are not ordinary times. Anything is possible. You may be a new kind of star talker, one we haven't seen before. She glanced at Bixer and Frolix. They have both looked away. Be sure of one thing, though. Having a gift like this is never easy. It is a huge responsibility. And not everyone who has such powers wants them. Bix's needles darkened at her words. Frolix just left. Wait a minute, said Lucky. Are you saying Frolix and Bix are as star talkers too? I'm not a star talker, muttered Bix, Bix under her breath. But you will be one day, said Mr. Her face wrinkled with lines of pains. I shan't be here forever, you know. When I am gone, you will take my place. And when the professor goes, Frolix will succeed him. You've always known this, yet neither of you will accept your power, constantly fighting, taking nothing seriously. Come on, Mr. Kerr, drawled Frolix, putting his hooves upon the table. Can you imagine me being all wise and stuff? It ain't never going to happen. Not if you don't grow up and take responsibility. But we don't want that responsibility, said Bixer. We never asked for it. I understand your feelings, my dear, much better than you might imagine, replied the old lady. But alas, we do not always have the choice. Alas, snorted Frolix, you star talkers are well, almost wiped out by your own people. Does that sound like something anyone would choose? There was an awkward, painful silence. Then Mystica sighed wearily. Frolix is right about one thing, said Lucky. With the coming of war, it became dangerous to be a star talker. So we went into exile, scattered across space and hid ourselves away. That's why this is a secret and why you must keep it. But do you understand now? You are not the only one with secrets and gifts. Far from it. Here on the ship, you are not alone. He stared at each of them in turn. Not alone, the words comfort him a comforted him a little. So what do you think I should do? He asked her. I cannot tell you what to do. Others may have, have their opinions, but only you can know for sure. So, think you, so I think you need to learn more about this gift of yours before you make any decisions. She coughed, a painful fit that shook her own body. She drew her furs closer around her and adjusted her headscarf. Does anyone else know about your powers? She managed to say at last. My mother knew. She said my father warned her if it was, it was going to happen, so he must know too. And then you were right. Then you were right to go looking for him, said Mystica, and you must keep looking until you find him, for his knowledge may hold the key. She glanced at Captain Knox. We've made good time. We're near the outskirts of the Leo system now. I can take you to see the Professor and get your asteroid prepared. repaired. Oh, thank you, said Lucky. Thank you so much. But Captain Knox was scowling. Mystica, I've done what you asked and brought us here, but I will not let you run such risks. You're not well enough to go out into the dangerous planet. You're staying on the ship, and I'm just staying to look after you. Lucky peered at her. She did seem very frail and weak. For all the bright colours on her clothes, her scale was, skin was pale, almost translucent. Oh, are you OK, Mr. Curry asked. I'm fine, she smiled. I would love to come with you, but for the man you need to see is my old comrade, the star talker of the past. And I've not seen you for many years, but perhaps the captain is right. She turned to Frolix and Bixer. You two must do it. Take Lucky to see the professor and invite my comrade back to the ship while you're there. I suspect he may wish to travel with us for a while. Knox stared at Frolix and Bixer. He seemed full of doubts. Can you two take this responsibility seriously? He asked them. For once in your lives, can you stay out of trouble? Can you keep the boy away from danger? Oh, from what I saw of these, those pirates, he can look after himself, Frolix grinned. But sure, I'll be your bodyguard, Lucky. He flexed his rippling middle muscles and proudly pulled his coat of liquid metal. Don't worry, kid. You'll be safe with me. Yeah, right, said Bix and Needles, bristling. We all know who's going to look after the pair of you. This is no joke, said the captain, his great horns glinting. If those pirates showed us anything, it's that a human travelling with Axa is bound to attract, attract attention. The Shadow Guards will, not, will be out in force after the bombing of Ares 1. Shadow Guards? Got lucky. Naturally. And what we're going to do if they find him and rip his brain scan? We'll make him one of us, of course, sighed Mystica. 
We'll give him horns, we'll give him hooves, we'll make his eyes burn. You'll do what, said Lucky. He looked round at the others, but it was as if Mr. Kerr dropped a stone in the cabin. All conversation stopped dead at her words. Bixer and Frolix both turned away, their faces ashen. At last, Knox stood up, his face like thunder. Do whatever you must, he said darkly. Frolix, come with me to the cockpit. Our star talker has spoken. Let's get the ship to Leo 5. Couple of things. What does Leo 5 look like? Two, what does Mystica mean by put these uh, disguise on him? And three, maybe you could draw an astrolabe and look for the 12 signs of the zodiac around the edge and see what you can put onto it. Bye bye.